In a high school graduation, a guy named Van Wilder is giving his honor speech. He is an incredible student, who has received every single honor from the school. Van is also a good-looking guy, which makes him popular with girls. He and his fellow students have just graduated high school. Van and his father are planning to go to the Netherlands for the summer. But because of a sudden business deal, his father can no longer accompany Van on his vacation. Nevertheless, he only has one message for his son to have fun before college. Summer is over. It's time for Van to enter college. Van comes into his small dorm room, which does not look very fancy. He is unsatisfied and renovates the room himself. To make the room bigger, he breaks the wall and meets his roommate, Farley. He is a stoner and loves making special brownies. While they are settling in, Dirk and Benedict knock on their door. They let Van know that the Dean, Colonel Charles, is looking for him. Everyone is in military attire. Van tries to joke around with the Dean, but he is such a serious man. He does not find Van's joke funny, which makes him dislike Van. The Colonel takes the freshman out for a ride in his golf cart. He tells Van that he used to go to this college with Van's father. He does not get along well with him because Van's father is arrogant. He used to act like he owned the place just because he's rich. In fact, the Wilder family is so rich that a college hall is named after them. However, he runs the school now and expects Van to follow Reardon's rules. That means no drinking alcohol, no fornicating, and no partying. Coolidge is a very strict military school. The Dean threatens to make Van's life miserable if he fails to follow the rules. Seconds later, Van is already breaking rules. He is handing out flyers for a party he hosts that night. He approaches a pair of girls and tells them about this party. But their responses are not receptive. They point to a sign that says no drinking, no kissing and no drugs. Van and Farley scream in terror. The college really is strict. Later that night, true to the rules, nobody shows up at their party besides you. The Asian man brings over a roasted duck. You comes to America to experience a college life party with girls. Van, Farley and you dress up to bring their party elsewhere. They bring their drinks and crash into a sorority girl party. It's a Bible study group where everyone dresses in holy clothes. The club's leader, Jezebel, comes down the stairs to meet them. She confiscates their alcohol drink. However, the guys don't give up. They hide under the bed and spy on the girls. Apparently the girls are not as holy as they seem. They like to pleasure themselves with toys. With this information, the boys secretly steal all of their toys. The next day, Van goes to the college church. In the entrance, he meets Caitlin. She is accompanied by her boyfriend, Dirk. He is the guy that knocked on his door the other day. She is not single, but Van is determined to get her no matter what it takes. The priest is giving a speech about how fornication is the biggest sin on campus. The Bible club girls are sitting right behind him on a long bench. Unknown to them, Van's plan is in motion. The guys have installed the toys they stole under the long bench. Van presses a button inside his fake Bible. The toys all come to life under the bench. They begin to vibrate wildly. The girls start getting hot and squirm in their seats. Behind Van, Caitlin sees him fiddling with the button. She is amused that Van seems to be a rule breaker. After the mass, Colonel Charles confronts Van. He brings out all the toys hidden under the bench. He knows Van is behind this, but he cannot prove it. So he is giving Van a punishment. He forces Van to participate in a military discipline class. This military class is led by Caitlin herself. They have to pass this class in order to graduate college. During lunch, the guys are bothered by Dirk and Benedict. Dirk spits on Van's food to spite him. Van is unbothered and calls him a lowly soldier. He is now angry and is about to beat Van up. Suddenly they are interrupted by Caitlin. Van smiles and tells Caitlin that Dirk is just being nice. So nice, in fact, that he is willing to trade his lunch with him. This is of course not the truth. But Dirk refuses to look like a coward in front of his girlfriend. He keeps his mouth shut and lets Van eat his delicious lunch. Now he has to eat Van's food that he spit it on. In a football match, Coolidge is losing badly. Van knows this is his chance to prove himself. He thinks the team lacks motivation. By that, he means the cheerleading team is not motivating enough. He enters the girls' locker room. He tells everyone to properly cheer because they were only sitting around doing nothing. He gives them a close makeover to become more motivating. The girls go out in their new cheerleading outfit. The football players see this. True to Van's prediction, they get more motivated. They will not let the girls down. They begin to play so much better. The scores are turning around with Van's help. 
Against all odds, Coolidge wins. To celebrate, everyone throws a party that night. The rules are disregarded. There are alcoholic drinks, kissing, and partying everywhere. The students finally let loose because of Van. Surprisingly, Caitlin is there at the party. She is curious but leaves the party much sooner. Van sees her and comes after her. He jokingly calls her a prude. She laughs and tells him she would love to join. However, she can't jeopardize her chance of becoming a military officer. She has to graduate with a perfect record. Van lets her leave but accompanies her walk to the dorm. The day after the party, Van becomes very popular. Everyone wants advice from him. It seems like he can solve everything. Van meets Caitlin in the library. They talk about their dreams. Van does not like to follow orders because his father is authoritative. He insinuates that Caitlin might have a father issue as well. She gets offended at this and leaves. From afar, Dirk is watching the exchange. He is not happy with Van. He thinks Van is going to steal his girlfriend. That night, they kidnap Van. They bring him into a basement and torture him. They force him to drink endless beer. But it does not work because Van is too good of a drinker. Dirk decides to just beat up his face. Van's face is all bruised up. But he is not going down without a fight. He will take revenge. Van takes his dog's crap. He puts it inside a container in Dirk's locker. He camouflages it as war paint. Dirk and his friends spread crap everywhere in their faces. Dirk is largely embarrassed by the ordeal. He enters Caitlin's room uninvited. He rants about how it's all Van's doing. Caitlin is not having any of it. She tells him that he starts at first by beating him up. Dirk gets angry that Caitlin is defending Van. He tells her not to see Van ever again. Now Caitlin is angry at him. She informs him that he cannot tell her what to do. She can see whoever she likes. Caitlin is upset and breaks up with him. She kicks him out of her room. The next morning, Caitlin has a one-on-one -on -one session with Van. She looks happy after the breakup. Van proposes a bet between them. If he can finish the lap in 10 minutes, she must agree to go on a date with him. Caitlin agrees with the bet. Van tries really hard to keep up with Caitlin. With 10 seconds left, Van is so tired. He is about to give up. Caitlin looks over at him and motivates him. Van is now riled up and finishes the lap just on time. He wins the bet. Caitlin stands true to her promise and tours him around campus. That night, the pair goes on a date. Van picks his date up with a golf cart. It is all decorated with flowers and candles. He hands her a flower necklace and rides the cart with her. Caitlin thanks him for changing things around campus. Everyone seems happier. They are free to do whatever they want without people telling them what to do. Caitlin shares that her ambition to become a military officer stems from her father. Her whole family is military officers and they expect their son to be one as well. But they had a daughter so she feels the must to fulfill that role. Van is sympathetic with her. He tells her to do what she wants. Meanwhile, Colonel Charles and Dirk are not happy with this development. Everyone starts to break away from the rules. The girls have begun to dress up in revealing clothes. People are kissing in public. And it is all because of Van. While Van is out on his date, Dirk breaks into his room. They plant an illegal drug in his room. Dirk calls the police. He tips them that there is illegal narcotics in Van's house. He disappears before Van and Caitlin return. When the pair comes back, they have no idea what awaits them. As the couple is about to kiss, the police barges in. With guns ablazing, he tells Van that he is in possession of illegal narcotics. He searches the place and finds the bag. However, the bag is empty. The drug is nowhere in sight. The police then leave them alone. Van finds his dog passed out. It seems the dog has eaten all the drugs inside the bag. Caitlin deduces that Dirk must be behind this. Van disagrees. He thinks it's Colonel Charles himself that is behind this. In the Dean's office, he has just been informed that his plan has failed. They did not find the drugs in Van's room. Frustrated, he invites a masseuse. Unknown to him, the masseuse is actually Yu's girlfriend. She pretends to be a masseuse to set him up. She blindfolds the man and covers his members with peanut butter. She lets Van's dog in the room. The dog starts licking at the man's crotch. He does not know that it is a dog, not the pretty masseuse. Suddenly, his wife comes into the room. Van previously had called her so she would come in and see the scene. She passes out seeing her husband in such a state. Colonel Charles knows this is Van's plan. With Dirk, they vow revenge on Van and Caitlin. The next day, their plan is already hatching. 
Dirk purposely puts Caitlin on guard's duty, knowing her father is coming. She is now occupied and can't attend his father's dinner. Van offers to take the guard duty for her. Caitlin is touched by his offer and lets him. Van invites his friends to patrol with him. Meanwhile at the diner, Caitlin meets her father. The man informs Caitlin that Dirk called him. He told him that Caitlin already broke up with the guy. Caitlin confirms and lets him know that she has a new boyfriend. Although he is not a military man. Suddenly, Colonel Charles passes their table. He praises Caitlin's work at the college. The dean invites the pair to the college to meet Caitlin's squadron. Currently they are on guard duty so Caitlin can meet her father. He agrees with the offer and the group heads back to the college. Caitlin tries to call Van to let him know. But Van's phone is taken by Jezebel. She has been recruited to help Dirk with his plan against Van. There is no way to let Van and his friends know they are coming. The garage opens. Inside, Van's friends are all partying. They are dismissing their guard duty. Van comes out of the van topless with Jezebel. He has been refusing her advances all night, but everything looks suspicious. Caitlin and his father are embarrassed. Caitlin's unit is now seen in a bad light. After everyone leaves, Colonel Charles threatens Van. If he does not resign and quit Coolidge, he will put the incident on record. With the incident recorded, it will tarnish Caitlin's name. She will never have a military career. Van tries to call Caitlin but she refuses to answer. She thinks he has betrayed and cheated on her. Van remembers his father's words. A wilder never gives up. He refuses to let Colonel Charles get the upper hand. He barges into the Dean's meeting. He lets everyone know that he is just jealous of Van's father. Caitlin has nothing to do with this but he has to drag her into it. He calls him a coward and challenges him to a war game. Whoever loses will leave Coolidge for good. Caitlin hears everything and supports Van. She refuses to accept Colonel Charles' recommendation. Caitlin's father is proud of Caitlin for doing this. He does not want his daughter to follow a crooked colonel. Caitlin forgives Van. She figures that he never cheats on her. She is determined to help him win. The war game is about to begin. The rules of the game is, whoever catches the other team's general will win. Anyone who loses an armband will be considered captured. Van's father comes to support his son. He will be the general of the team. It's the battle of old rivals. The team separate to strategize. The game starts. Van's team quickly captures the colonel's recon team. They have the upper hand. They also tempt the other team with shirtless girls to distract them. The colonel finally finds Van's father. He instructs his team to run after him. However, it's a trap. Van's team rises up from the sand with a surprise attack. They successfully captures everyone. You scares another squadron by cutting a tree with his kung fu moves. While in truth, Caitlin secretly cuts the tree with a chainsaw. The colonel's team give up their armbands. All his men are captured. Only Colonel Charles and Dirk remain. Caitlin and Van meet Dirk on the bridge. Caitlin asks Van to go ahead so she can finish Dirk alone. They wrestle with each other. Caitlin finds an opening and kicks him. Dirk goes down. She takes his armband. Meanwhile Van is discovered by Colonel Charles. He's held at gunpoint with a real gun. He distracts him with his dog and knocks him out with a helmet. Van's team has won easily. With the victory, Colonel Charles is kicked out of Coolidge. The headmaster oversees everything and notes Caitlin's incredible strategy. She will be getting a recommendation directly from him. Van's father congratulates his son. He is proud that he can stand up for himself. He also reveals that you is actually his security team. It's a nice surprise for Van. He invites Van to skip college and work for him. Van refuses. This time, things are different. He is happy to be in college. After talking with everyone, Van and Caitlin ditch the party. There will be more parties to come in the future. Now is the time for their alone time. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.